so my name is Sadia. I am a tech recruiter at DigitalOcean, and I've been in tech recruiting for about the last seven years, and I started working in what would be considered tech companies about four years ago. A little bit about me. I was born in Brooklyn, but I was raised and still live in Plainfield, New Jersey, a town of about 50,000 people. Our poverty rate is about 23 percent, median household income is $54,500, and per capita income is almost but not quite $23,000. My family moved there when I was three years old, my parents, who you see up on the slides, and my little brother. And before I move forward, I want to clarify something. We didn't grow up in poverty. My dad raked in a solid $36,000 a year. And he was really the main breadwinner in my family until my mom started working when I was around eight years old. She started working the night shift because it paid more. And she sacrificed her sleep, her well-being, to bring more money into the household and still be available during the day to take care of her children. And then a few years after that, my dad lost his job. And he was forced to take a minimum wage job delivering car parts for a mechanic shop because not working in my house was never an option. And my freshman year of college, he wasn't able to work at all, and we went back to being a single-income household. My mom, like many heads of households, stretched every dollar that she could and never made us feel like we had too little. I went to public and elementary school, public elementary and middle school, and there were a lot of kids who came from families like mine. There were also kids who had even less. And we all recognized that in, in each other. And we were kind of, we were part of the same tribe in a, in a way. And in my home, we always had food on the table, but we never ate out. I still have a stack of Disney VHS tapes and a VCR to go along with it to watch them over and over again, but never went to the movie theater when I was a kid. And because of all of that, I didn't really realize that we were different. And I didn't realize that even though we weren't living in poverty, money still controlled a lot of our lives. And I couldn't see that until a little bit later. So I was lucky enough to get into a magnet high school that accepted kids from different cities in my county. And it wasn't until high school that I realized, hey, we're not actually that well off because in this high school, I was the only student from my town who didn't attend a private school. I was now one of few kids who got a reduced price lunch when in my other schools, we all got free lunch. That was the norm for me when I was a kid. And I remember my mom's reaction when she learned we had to buy a TI-83 calculator for my math classes. And her face I remember it because those were expensive then, but here it was on a school shopping list as if it wasn't, as if everyone could just afford this calculator. I was taught to wait and buy things when they were on sale, to double up on coupons, to take advantage of store closings, to value every penny found on the ground because every cent mattered and every cent distanced us from having nothing. There was no safety net for my family. Instead of expressing value through money, we express value through time. We watched TV together, we visited family in Queens, my parents helped us with our homework, time was the way that we expressed value. So how do you express value? When I think about expressing value, I think about three things. Time, language, and money. We express value through spending time with each other, by offering another person this thing that you can't really see but you never really have enough of. We say words like I love you and you're amazing to show affection for one another, but language or communication isn't something that we always get right. But money seems to be the one thing we all understand, and it's something that's universal in this world. Less money equals less value, and more money equals more value. In our society, we look at people who have less money as unworthy, as if they were in total control of all of their circumstances. Why couldn't they just pull themselves up? And in our, in our culture, we idolize people with a lot of money. We want to be them. 
And in the tech industry, we aspire to increase value, which is often translated into making and spending more money. We see investors pumping millions into ideas that they think could one day change the world. Companies are spending millions of dollars creating campuses and office spaces that they believe are modern and cool. I mean, the last place I worked had a huge cafeteria. There was a machine that pumped out fresh peanut butter with apple slices off to the side. And there were company-sponsored happy hours every week. And we had hundreds of employees, so that was expensive. And looking back, I now think that's tame because I've been to many other companies where they do way more. And all of it is to show that they value their employees and they value what they're putting out there into the world. But what happens when the way that you value money doesn't really align to the way your industry or your company values money? So my first job out of college paid $40,000 a year. I remembered being pretty bummed out because I went to an expensive private college and my mom worked a lot of overtime to pay for that college. I couldn't believe that I wasn't making any more. And when I told my parents how much I would be earning, my dad turned to me and he said he'd never worked for that much money in his entire life. And that really stuck with me. And then I entered the tech industry about four years ago, and my salary increased quite significantly. I would say it about doubled. And my family asked me a lot of questions. They still ask me questions like, what do you do for a living? Why do you get paid so much to talk to people? My brother's always telling me, I don't think you have a real job. <laughs> they were amazed that I worked out of places that catered lunch and gave me free stuff and paid for me to travel to conferences. It was pretty much a dream come true. And I started to think, why would I ever leave any job in this industry? At my current job, I don't pay a monthly premium on my health care. I use a MacBook Air, my first time ever using one because I couldn't afford one before. And I have more hoodies and t-shirts than I know what to do with from a ton of different companies. I have an entire wardrobe because of this industry. And all the free and sometimes expensive perks were great, they still are, and they sometimes make me feel uncomfortable. What if we didn't spend so much on a branded fidget spinner? How else could we express value? When I asked myself that question, I realized that maybe the way I express value isn't really the same as how this industry as a whole expresses value. I see being in tech as standing at the intersection of aspiration and reality. And when your sense of value gets distorted, as mine did in the beginning, you start to question whether or not you belong. And we all want to belong, Belonging means that we bring our whole authentic selves to the workplace. We contribute ideas, we take part in discussions more effectively because we're not trying to pretend to be something that we're not. We all want to belong. Do you belong? Now again, we all know there's a lot of money in this industry. We've seen photos of the decked out office spaces where there are couches, ping pong tables, phone booths, in some cases a slide taking you from one floor to another. Some of us go into those spaces every day. Some of us are going into those spaces tomorrow. Most people, if not all in this industry, have a smartphone. Because of that, some companies don't even have landlines. And office parties aren't just gatherings for employees, they are actually performance pieces themselves. I was at one where they had Cirque du Soleil artists around. And all of it, it's cool, it's fun, it makes you feel special, it's how these companies are expressing that they value you, the individual, and how they express their values that are up there on their wall. But again, not everyone shares these values. And if we're really going to be a truly inclusive industry that's welcoming of different stories, then we need to examine how we're expressing value. Because ultimately, we all become products of our environment. And if our environment is valuing dollars spent over anything else, then that's going to show up in how we interact with each other. So I found that my cell phone's a great example of this. I have an iPhone 5S, it is very small, and it is two iPhone generations old, which is ancient in this industry. 
and it still works perfectly fine. In my house, you didn't replace something expensive with something more expensive unless it was broken. But I am constantly asked why I don't upgrade my phone. And it's not a mean question, there's no bad intent. I enjoy the conversation. I like discussing what new phones are out there, which cameras are better. Maybe one day I will upgrade my phone. But more often than not, the conversation lands on, but it's only $25 a month to upgrade. And I always say, I don't care. Like, I don't want to spend $25. And the other person will undoubtedly say, what do you mean? It's just $25. Now remember, we were a family of four on $36,000 a year, and we had bills. $25 was a lot of money growing up, and it still is to me because I'm a product of my environment. And while this example is pretty innocuous, the line of thinking shows up in our workplaces. For example, needing an app to open up your office doors. That app requires a smartphone which an assumption was made that you want to own a smartphone. What if you don't have one? Does that mean that you're not supposed to be in that space? Or company-sponsored travel to a conference. Usually, that's an expense that's reimbursed, as in you pay your money up front, and then the company gives it back to you. But what if I don't have the money for that plane ticket in the first place? Another example I found of this showing up is in coffee. Every place I've worked has always had coffee available. Sometimes it was really shitty coffee. Sometimes it was like a fancy Starbucks machine. No matter what, it was there. Yet, I still go outside of the office for coffee. It's a habit I picked up, I realized, when I started working in tech. I once asked a new hire that I recruited if he wanted to go grab a cup of coffee. And he said, Sadia, can I ask you a question? I was like, yeah, of course. He's like, I have had three different coffee meetings this week all outside the office. Why do you all go outside of the office for coffee when it's right here and it was free? And I felt really dumb because I was asking him in the kitchen with the coffee machine. <laughs> so it was in that moment I realized I am now a product of this new environment because old Saudia would have never chosen to pay for coffee if it was free and right in front of her. Now, I'm not saying don't enjoy the money in this industry. Some of the perks really do contribute to my quality of life, and I love them. One of the greatest benefits I've found in tech is that it allows me to live a life that I'd once dream about. I get to have an annual fancy dinner with my friends where we drop some serious cash on a very nice meal in New York City. I regularly treat myself to things like the makeup on my face right now, that I would have never considered buying in the past because of the price tag. I can help my family out in ways that I was never able to in the past. What I am asking is that we get better at expressing value. As we create more diverse companies, more inclusive cultures, let's not forget that the way we express value is actually a big part of that. Maybe instead of spending thousands on redecorating an office space we all go out and we spend some time doing a community service project together. Take some photos of that, put that up on the wall. Look for ways to express value through time and language. My last company, we had a summer barbecue where we invited everyone's families to come and hang out in a park and we got to hang out with each other outside of the office, meet each other's families, create memories that way. And it was really valuable. At DigitalOcean, where I work now, we have recognitions at the end of every all-hands meetings. It's an opportunity for us to stand up and shout each other out for all the great things we've done. What I'm asking is that we spend more time listening to each other and listening to stories of the people around us. Ask each other, how do you express value? Thank you.